What we're going to be going over here are counterbalancing balance sheet and income statement errors. And those are errors which are offset or corrected over two periods. And for example here, we're going to be looking at counterbalancing errors that have to do with expense items here. And we're going to be looking at our accrued wage expense here for one of our examples, and then also our prepaid insurance expense here for the other example here. So let's start with our accrued wage expense here, for example one. Now this is the case here where we have a failure to recruit our uh, record our accrued wages here at the end of year 1231X1. And this is the case where we did not accrue the wages of $3,000. That is, the uh, wages did not go, uh, we did not expense out that $3,000 worth of wages that were payable here or accrued here in year X1. Now, we're going to be looking at the case here where we look at the entry for year X1 where we have, where year X2 here to correct the error if the books are not closed and then also look at how we'd handle it if the books are closed here for year X2. So this is what we have to deal with. We're going to have these retained earnings here, uh, part of our equity here, and we're going to have to make an adjustment to our retained earnings here on the balance sheet. And then we also have our wage expense here on our income statement. We're going to have to adjust that for this error that we have here. So let's just go through it real quickly here and we'll just go through the logic of what we're doing here. So let's look at case A here. Let's assume the books are not closed here for year X2 and we're going to make a correcting entry here for that error that we had for year X2 or year X1 here. So what we would do here in this case we're going to make the correction here. Let's look at our wage expense here. We're going to credit it or reduce our wage expense by that $3,000 that was uh, missing or we didn't record here in year X1. Now let's look at, we'll run through the logic of that here. So we credit or reduce our wage expense here by $3,000 and then the debit would go uh, to our retained earnings. We debit or reduce our retained earnings here by $3,000. So that's our correction that we have to make here. For, uh, for that uh, fact that we didn't accrue the wages ex expense here in year X1 here. So the correction here, this is what we would make here if the books are not closed. Now, B here, if the books are closed for year X2, that is we've already, are, we closed the books here and we aren't gonna make any, we can't make any adjusting entries here, or we're not gonna make any adjusting entries, you make no correcting entry because the error is counterbalanced. That is the expense recorded for wages payable here of 3,000 here. They're actually gonna pay the wages here in year X2 for what should have been an accrued here in year X1. So year X2, the $3,000 would have been paid. It would go to the wage expense here in income statement, and that would be reducing our net income and our retained earnings. So this is the rationale here. So the rationale for, cor correct, for the correcting entry A is as follows. So number one here, when you pay the uh, X1 accrued wages here in year X2, you're going to be debiting or increase, increasing your wage expense here by $3,000 here in year X2 here. So uh, again here, second point, the wage expense in year X2 would be overstated by $3,000 because for, it would be overstated by $3,000 because it should have been uh, recorded here in year X1. Now, point three here, because you did not record uh, year X1, the accrued wages as wage expense here in year X1, the net income for year X1 is overstated by $3,000. Uh, resulting in an overstatement here of retained earnings. That is, net income is close to retained earnings, so both the net income and the retained earnings are overstated here uh, because you didn't record the wages here in year X1. Now, point four here, if the books are closed here in year X2, no adjustment is required because the wage expense here of $3,000 is recorded here. So ultimately you're getting into your onto your retained earnings, you're going to reduce it by $3,000 and you're recognizing your weight through by recognizing the wage expense. So what you're going to do here for uh, if there's no adjustment here, no adjustment required because the ex again the expenses would be recorded here in your X2, that would be reducing our net income which is close to re retained earnings which is reduced and the error is counterbalanced. So if we go back up to our T accounts here, by making this correction here for the year X1 wages that wasn't, wasn't recorded or should have been recorded or debited here as a wage expense here for year X1, we make this, it looks a little weird here where we're actually reducing our wage expense here for, for the year here, making our correction where we're reducing our wage expense. But in fact here, 
we're ultimately increasing our wage expense here when we in year X2 you're going to the wages are going to be payable so it's going to go into the wage expense here increase our wage expense here on our income statement so our correcting entry actually uh, make uh, our and our income statement here they balance each other out here so there's we're not seeing any wage expense for the year well we're seeing the wage expense here because it's going to go in it's going to go as part of our net income but with our fact that we made our correcting entries here for retained earnings and by debiting or reducing our retained earnings here and our wage expense here uh, in for our adjustment here you can see the wage expense here of credit here is going to cancel out here for the wa uh, wage expense correction here for year x1 cancels out whatever wage expense here for, uh, that we're going to record here for year x2 so credit 3,000 here, debit 3,000 here, they cancel each other out, but ultimately you're getting to reducing your retained earnings for those wage expenses here. You reduce it by $3,000 through the correction. Okay, so that takes care of our case here for our accrued wages. Now let's move over here to example two here. Now this is the case where you have a failure to record prepaid an expense here in year X1. So in year X1, you purchase a two-year insurance policy, let's say costing $1,000, and it's debited to insurance expense and credited to cash. That is, everything is expensed here, the entire $1,000 here in year X1, and um, you, you don't, you're not doing, there's $500 that's required that should have been expensed here in year X1. So you take what the total amount that we paid here was $1,000 for this uh, prepaid insurance expense. And what $500 here should go to each of the years here. Year X1 should get $500 and year X2 should be record, get $500. But what's happened here is the entire $1,000 was recorded here in year X1. So again, we have to go down and looking at, this is where we're gonna have to again, make our adjustments here to retain earnings and also uh, as part of equity here in a balance sheet and also our insurance expense here on income statement. Now this is gonna be adjustment for that prepaid error here. So first case here, assume that the books are not closed for year X2. So this is the case where you're gonna make this correcting entry here. So this is the correcting entry here. You would, uh, and this is in year X2, we're making the correcting entry here for the year X1 air here. So you would debit or increase your insurance expense here by $500 and then you would credit or increase your retained earnings here by $500. And this is going to be the rationale here. So what happened here, that's okay. So assume the books are not closed here for year X2, you make this correcting entry here. Debit insurance expense for 500 credit retained earnings for 500 and the rationale is what we follow through this year ultimately we want to know what's going to our retained earnings here for that insurance expense but it's a matter of timing and correcting of the year here so when we made our recorded this insurance expense here of debit here of one thousand dollars here uh, wrongly here in the year x1 here we also the debit here increased our insurance uh, increased our expense reduced our net income and net income is close to retained earnings so we would have ultimately reduced our retained earnings here by a thousand dollars so reducing net income and retained earnings by a thousand dollars by taking all the expense here in year x1 when we're all supposed to take five hundred dollars okay so let's look okay so what is going to happen here uh, for okay so let's look at if the books are closed here for year x2 you're going to make no correcting entry here because the air it'd be counter counterbalanced expenses recorded in the insurance paid of one thousand dollars here in year x1 reducing our net income and our retained earnings so we reduced we reduced our retained earnings here recorded all the expense here in year for year x1 here when we make when we made that adjusting entry but when we come back here to year x2 here what's happened here we would actually now a here if the books are not closed here we made that five hundred dollar adjustment here so what has happened here we actually reduced our insurance expense here by taking the insurance that extra five hundred dollars here and when we made that adjusting entry and that five hundred dollars would have actually gone in and reduced our uh, retained earnings here by five hundred dollars but that's why we made the balancing amount here we've gone from debited here for five hundred dollars credit 
uh, our retained earnings here for $500 because ultimately the $500 here uh, with in A here, if the books are not closed, this $500 would have gone into our retain, reducing our net income and, uh, in, and reducing our retained earnings by the same amount here. But by making this correcting entry here, we ultimately got to what we have here. Just so we got our retained earnings correct here. For the first year here, we reduced our retained earnings because that entire $1,000 expense was, was recorded here, reducing our retained earnings. But by making this adjustment here, a credit or increase our retained earnings, $500 here, we balance out with what would be going to the income expense our expense for the year here of $500 for year X2. So they cancel each other out here, the 500 credit 500, debit of 500, and you end up with retained earnings here based with this, that you originally have here a, one th a reduction in retained earnings by $1,000 for the expense that we recognized here in year X1. So that's really, you gotta follow through the logic here to determine what really belongs in retained earnings, the timing here, and make sure that you get whatever expenses you have, either increases or decreases, they have ultimately get recorded here in retained earnings and you have to maintain your balances here in retained earnings because remember any expense items here that are sitting on the income statement increases or decreases are going to go into the net income and then the net income is going to flow into retained earnings. So you have to use a little reverse logic here and look at your timing and how you're going to make your adjustments here to your expense items and also your retained earnings so you come up with the correct retained earnings here. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.